I'm going to be very honest with you. There's going to be a time when I'm just going to stop playing video games. And yeah, someone in their 20s is kind of just normal to not do. But I kind of think of it, there are people who made careers out of playing these games. So, you know, it, there's going to be a time when there's not going to be something to play and there's not going to be something worth playing. And so far, I've been seeing a lot of games that have been worth, you know, time to wait for. Games coming out decades later with sequels or remasters or possibly even just a whole reboot. It's something that I'm very interested in, but I tend to lean towards different consoles or just different genres in games. And that just I think that just is one of my things that I've kind of steered away from. Different genres. Sure, I enjoy the good a good Call of Duty shooter, a stealth shooter, survival horror, Fallout, or, you know, anything that piques my interest. And I think that's the problem for me. My interest, I, I kind of narrow it down to like, oh, this game looks interesting, I'm going to play it. And then I play it, and then that's going to be part of my thing. But I might not unlock the genre in general. Or there's just something that irks me that just doesn't, that likes this game, but not the other games that follow for it. So, I decided to do this thing. So PlayStation has this uh, PlayStation Plus thing going on where they give you three monthly games to choose from. You can play any of them, and by the time the next month rolls in, you are given three new games to keep in your uh, library. And they stay there up until your subscription runs out or just, you know, until you quit. So I decided to just take a, take a stroll and gander and see what was available. And so far, two games have really caught my interest. Endling, Extinction is Forever, and Alu Wink Remastered. I actually remember that game when it first came out on Xbox 360. That was very cool. The third game was a Call of Duty uh, Black Ops Cold War. I already played that, so I'm not going to do anything for that one. So let's begin. So depending on when I make this video and when I'm recording everything, this is already in August and there's already oh, two other games or three other games being set for uh, release already so well not release it's just being you know a, a pick so there's Alan Wake Remastered, uh, Endling, uh, Extinction is Forever and Call of Duty Cold War which uh, I've already played and already gotten so I'm not gonna do a whole extensive review on that and I've been hearing a lot of things from Activision, so hackers or something like that, so I'm not going to bother with that. So, we're going to start off with Alan Wake. Starting with the Alan Wake Remastered, it's a game about a horror mystery novel writer named Alan Wake, who takes a vacation into a small town called Bright Falls to get away from his writer's block, and he ends up in an old manuscript, turning the small town into a dark nightmare. Originally released on Xbox on the Xbox 360, it was remastered and released onto the next-gen consoles in 2021. Personally, I remember playing the game for the first time on the 360, and it was a pretty fun experience that it left an impression on me to replay the remastered version. You play as Alan Wake, as him and his wife go to a small town called Bright Falls, as Alan is dealing with the writer's block. After an argument with his wife and about getting back into writing, his wife goes missing, and Alan wakes up from a car crash a week later. He is confronted by dark spirits who try to stop Alan from getting his wife back. Armed with a flashlight and a revolver, he goes on a search to find his wife through, write, through old manuscript writings and hopes to rewrite the ending and end the dark spirits one for all, once and for all. So starting off, gameplay feels kind of stiff with the counter movement, but other than that, the game feels pretty basic, which isn't a negative. Gunplay involves using a flashlight, or any light source for that matter, to damage enemies and to weaken the enemies who are protected by the dark spirits. There are a variety of weapons to choose from, from the revolvers, shotguns, rifles, flare guns, flashbangs, and flares to help fight off the dark spirits. With these weapons, you will fight through the woods. And that's it. You only ever go through the woods in some cabin areas and the town, but it doesn't deter me from the set design as there are a couple, favorite, couple of favorite locations of mine, such as the Anderson Farm that has a concert stage with fireworks, and the town as you shoot your way through to get to the fire, to get to the Coast Guard um, helicopter. The finale leads to a huge battle with the with the dark spirits and to end the end the nightmare once and for all using using an old clicker 
that Alan Wake has. I'd go over more about the story, but there is a lot of different things you gotta worry about, or just know. A lot of the time that that you're playing, Alan Wake, the protagonist, who happens to be a writer, is often describing mostly everything that's around him, and it kind of just feels like you're either the main character or the guy's narrating what he's seen, or maybe he's the one actually writing what's going on. So in some ways, it's a weird uh, fourth wall breaking type of thing. And there's been a lot of uh, stuff it stuff put into this game in terms of uh, set design, in certain terms of uh, world building. There's this whole game, other game, uh, some years uh, released later on called Control, and there's a DLC that has Alan Wake. And apparently, according to the game, Alan Wake may or may not be responsible for other games that are created. For example, he has a for example, just to put you on, put this into perspective, he has a character in a book series that he's writing called Alex Casey. Now, for some reason, I, I think I took this from the wiki, but there's a quote that says that something about universes are created. In one, a writer writes about a police officer. In the other, the police officer is real. So, in some way, Al Wake, who is a completely separate game from all these other games that are being combined is responsible for characters like Alan for not Alan like responsible for Max Payne the series that uh, from Rockstar Games and he's also you know in, in charge of pretty much recreating a whole a whole history or, of the world or something like that it's a huge thing to get into but I'm not going to dull you in, dull anybody into into all that Alan Wake as a game in general and as a standalone property is pretty well good. It's pretty good to just play through. There are um, episodes or DLCs that were included with the remastered version, which I I, I didn't really care much for uh, unless it explains the sequel that's coming out soon this year as I'm writing or speaking on it. I'm not even writing a script for this thing. Um, there, so there's also a prequel little short called Bright Falls, which kind of involves a char- which involves characters from the game into this little short series. So a lot of a lot of care was t- was put into this game series, and also one of my findings was a QR code in the, in the game, which leads to a unlisted or a, a video. Or something. I, I gotta. Uh, it's it's around there somewhere. I think. I don't know. But there was a lot of care put into this game, and I'm surprised. Thankfully, that this game was getting a sequel, which is a pretty huge deal. In for that, I barely got back into the Gallo and Wake series after so long. I'm actually glad I did. So for this uh, July pick, I'd I'd say it's a really good pick. I the the game really hasn't crossed my mind up until. That July that the game was it was available for, so obviously I snabbed it just for a quick measure and just to replay it nostalgic sake. Um, so for this one, I give this game an eight out of ten. Hello, I just wanted to add this into the on Wake uh, script audio thing. Uh, I didn't mention anything about Alan Wake himself, so I wanted to say a few things. He is a bit of a asshole. And by that, he is just easily annoyed by people in general. He is uh, very and somewhat egotistic in interviews that are presented in the game. Although he is very annoyed when people recognize him during his trip to Bright Falls. And is constantly being in hates when he is reminded about uh, his work. And he really does hate. He really has a hatred for, I guess, his fans when uh, this diner uh, lady is just pretty much his huge fan. He just doesn't really like being recognized in public. So uh, he's a bit of an asshole, but if you relate to being annoyed in public, yeah, he's he's pretty much a good character. He's like a favorite character. So 
Uh, I forgot to add that into the script when I was first uh, speaking. So I like to do a review on him. He is an asshole, but he has a soft spot. He's very insecure, but he does uh, care about the people around him. So there is at least that going for him. Anyways, I had to record this uh, last minute. Bye. So the good game is out of the way for the July picks. So now I'm going to be talking about a game that I thought was really well done. Um, it's called Endling Extinction is Forever. And uh, it's it was quite the emotional journey for me. So the game starts off in a burning forest. You play as this fox, a uh, pregnant fox. And this gives this section gives you the opportunity to learn about the game mechanics and uh Fight your way out of this freeze, uh, this burning inferno. After you escape the the four wildfire, you know, alive, you give birth to four uh, cubs. You get to choose how they look like, which is uh, I guess, which is actually pretty funny. I ended up uh, getting attached to all, th- all four of them, and your do- your job as a as the as the mother fox is to is to basically protect your children and feed them, teach them life essential life skills, and and survive. Now that's pretty much the whole game mechanics. You scout for food, explore locations, teach your cubs what they need to know to survive. Should you die, however, if you do die, the game restarts that day. So. It, the game doesn't continue on without you, although I will get to that part, so spoiler alert for, uh, I guess, the remaining of this video. So the pl- the essential plot kind of kicks in the, for the game when a scavenger st- attempt, uh, steals, kidnaps one of your one of your cubs, and throughout each day you're given a a optional task to follow the scent of where the scavenger has been to find your pup. And every time you search the sense, you end up learning a bit more about the scavenger. Of course, the whole whole plot starts off as I need to find my son or my my, my kid, and then you go off into a wow. So this is what the scavenger is, and he is not the first antagonistic character that you meet. The second. He's actually the second. The first antagonizing character that you meet would probably be the Badger. As in certain parts of the map, when you first start, he pretty much blocks an area and you have to either go around or figure out a way to figure out, you know, you know, not go that way, let's go somewhere else. Type of deal. Uh, but somewhere along the, along the road, you end up finding out, you end up saving the Badger from a trap set up by a scab set up by a hunter and then you save then you reunite uh, the badger's baby with its mom so in some ways the badger was mean and antagonizing but in reality it was just like you fighting fighting for its life protecting its own and scourging for you know its own so sooner or later you two are pretty much friends comrades in this world I haven't even talked about the world. The world is depressing as hell. Like every location, there's always some sort of pollution. The water, the the, the world, the, the, the trees are getting chopped down. Like as I was playing, I kind of started looking around going, wasn't there a tree there? Or hey, wasn't this area just, you know, filled with a lot of life? Now it looks depressing and dead. There's all these people standing around. They're either coerce you to try to because they want to pet you, or they make you look like they want to pet you, but in reality they'll just kill you for no other reason, no good reason either. So humans are definitely no go. But there, are, but there are people in the world that kind of show you that not everybody is, not every human is harmless, is harmful, is harming, gonna harm you. There's a the scavenger's daughter, Molly, according to the game, who, in pet terms of if if you allow her to pet you, she gives you food or your cubs. And there is a often she's a nice, 
a nice face to see in this harsh rea- in this harsh world. But as you soon realize throughout the story, she's dying with a disease. The scavenger is constantly trying to fix. And more along down the line, you end up you end up finding the scavenger at a low point in at a very very dark place. Soon you realize the scavenger was the scavenger kept the cub possibly to make Molly happy or at least that's what I am I got from this whole experience you reunite with the cub but now the scavenger is just alone of course you can let him pet you to show that despite everything maybe you do forgive him or maybe that maybe that he'll he will get a second chance but just know that you don't the, the after reuniting the game sort of is stagnant for a bit you're left scavenging explore new explore new areas avoiding things for a huge portion of the game a lot of this is a lot of the game is just depressing it's an envir- I, it's an environmental message about the world about cute what how what damages that humans could do to a, a living forest to the snowy areas to basically you know, nature itself. The huge area, um, the chicken, uh, the chicken farm, where you get where poultry is just, you know, scattered about the factory workers and all that stuff. I'm sure I do understand. There was a message to, um, to the conditions that animals were kept in, but during my playthrough, I had to disregard that message. Because, well, my cubs need to eat. I can't risk... I have to understand the message. But I didn't understand it. I did not understand the message then when playing. I guess it's the instincts of just trying to keep your cubs alive. Puts aside those morals of, wow, this looks bad. To, wow, an opportunity to eat. So it's those deci- it's decisions like that that make you me understand, you know. This world's damaging, but also I benefit from it in a sick way that the game did not intend for me to. There are also achievements that a lot that just have that sort of uh, environmentalism to it. There's one to to not feed your your cubs trash, to not kill an animal for a certain amount of days. But sometimes you don't. But the game doesn't really feel like you need to. Um, follow those examples because, well, you're a fox. Nature, nature is nature, and you're going to need to survive. Around the thirtieth night or day, the a flood kicks in. You and your cubs, the badger and their and their cub, are separated, and you two and the and all of you get lost in in the flood. After a while, you wake up in a desert. People are flocking dis- uh, a long distance away from you. You take a pick up your cubs from the water or oil, whatever it is. Get them out. You travel along. You find out the badger, who is your sole companion, whose family is your only friend. In this harsh reality, in this harsh world, has their cub killed? Their cub didn't survive, and now you, your cubs, and the badger are now running to the forest. Well, that's not until somebody shoots you in the back of the back of your leg as you were trying to escape. You do escape, but it's not for long until the bullet wound kicks in. You succumb to it. Cubs and the badger just lay there with you as you take your final moments knowing that, well, you made it. But where are your cubs? Or what about your cubs? Will they make it? You don't know. All those times with the skills that you've learned, you sort of sit there feeling, will they make it? Because I sure as hell missed a couple skills and I don't know if they will. The ending kind of seems to me, seems to be like a 
um, at the ending to The Road. If you haven't seen that movie or read the book, I recommend you do. The movie was, is such a good film. And I got a lot of vibes from that ending, too, from the ending. The characters... There's no triumphant ending to this game. You die. And your cubs, under the watchful eye of the badger, hopefully, now live anew in this forest. They, they're they forced to leave you behind. Will they survive? I don't know. And for that matter, you don't know. Will this forest survive? We don't know. That took a huge turn to being a good, re a fun review, but let me get down to that part now, because this felt like a rant. So gameplay-wise, it's very fun. It's a it's obviously a survival, a survival game, and you need to keep, take care of your cubs. Your cubs learn new skills that will help them find food or help you uh, access areas that, that you couldn't. Some of these skills can be hunting uh, rodents or and other animals, squeeze through tight spaces, um, digging into wormholes or even leaning off ledge ledges, which I did not get. There are traps that can hurt or kill you. If you pick through trash, you could, you may get a plastic bag uh, stuck on your head, and if you fail to get that off, you will probably die. There are other dangers like the owl who, if you're not careful and wake him up, he will try to nab one of your kids. There are also traps like the bear claw and the wooden trap, which are very noticeable, but sometimes you just end up getting locked into. There are interesting uh, mechanics. You could bark to make sure to, you could call out to your cubs by barking. You could pet your cubs to calm, to calm them down if they, run into something scary. Uh, you could also... You could also interact with humans, Molly being that only person to interact with, along with the scavenger, which I already explained. And there are three different lo and there are three different locations you can explore from. The snow, the woods, and the... I'm guessing I call this place... I'm gonna call that third place the uh, human colony, as there are a lot of humans there who are just living. These are obviously no, not places for animals, and like I said earlier, there was a tough part, and there is a heavy environmental message to the game, for that matter. That message, you know, deforestation is bad. Look what these animals have to go through. And look what humans are doing, are having to go through. The scavenger, people literally have to wear gas masks to survive, to basically uh, fight off the uh, air pollution. You know, I get the messages, but during the gameplays, I had to disregard them so my cups can eat, like I said earlier. Overall, this game left a pretty huge emotion to me, and I didn't. I had to stop for about a good minute or so because I didn't didn't know what to, to think. I didn't know what to say. I just I just sat there and thought, oh my god, I just died. And the game obviously gives you rewards and you know trophies and all that stuff if you want to be a completionist but I couldn't bear a second playthrough much like a, a really long game you have to just you know take a break from it and come back to it later because there's only so much you can do with the first the first playthrough that magic that you get from uh, playing the game for the first time and ending it for the first time, you know. The only other game to, uh, to get me, like, to have me feel that way would be Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, that was the same game, and Red Dead Redemption 2, as I just had to take a break. Can't do it again repeatedly, you just have to wait. And I believe this game is really worth the wait. So. And this long review, I give this game a good 10 out of 10.
maybe a nine or so. A, nine, a ten would be really pushing it, but it's a really good game in my opinion. So a nine, nine out of ten, a ten out of ten would probably do, probably be very good. So those are the games for the July picks. Call of Duty Cold War, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I would have done a thing on for, but I've already played the game, so um, I'm trying to do something new here. So that's skipped. It's a right game. Uh, sorry, Activision. But for the games that I've, that I've reviewed, uh, Alan Wake Remastered is created by Remedy Games. We like to support them. They've made other games such as Control, Max Payne, uh, Quantum Break, and a bunch of other games, such as Death Rally, Vanguard. Oh, that, that says code name. I'm not going off their website, but they supported other works. Those are their other notable, uh, other notable titles. So if you, so if you like Alan Wake, you'll probably like the other ones. Uh, Endlane was created by Handy Games, and they're a German company. They're actually a company uh, studio who operate in Germany. So, if you so if you like Endlane, you'll probably know their other works. Most of their work seems to be a lot of uh, mobile app games, but they also do have some notable ones, such as Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah, that's probably not probably a, a weird game to go off by, but they've also uh, helped with uh, SpongeBob SquarePants's uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom, Rehydrated, uh, Chicken Police, uh, Paint It Red, El Hijo, I said that wrong, A Wild West Tale, and other games such as Rebel Cops, uh, Rats Quest, Jagged Alliance, Rage, and Deadly Desert. <laughs> Well, trust me, there's companies out there that probably made me, that probably had their fair share of uh, started, started games. But those are those are a few notable um, tiles to go off of. So if you like Endling, do support Handy Games. If you like Alan Wake Remastered, if you like Alan Wake Remastered, do support uh, Remedy Games. These were the picks from July. I will now be I will be focusing and as I am currently playing the picks for August, and I am. A very late in recording. I'm probably going to be very late with editing as well. So, thank you for taking a quick look into this review and enjoy. And I hope you enjoyed the August the July picks. The August picks are very um, are very unique. The games for August are uh, Dreams, Death's Door, and Uh, golf. Golf. Like I said, I'll try anything once. Anyways, enjoy the video. Thank you.